Hi, I'm Brad at CES. I just got out of a 30 minute demo of the PlayStation VR 2, something that I've been holding back my enthusiasm just in case. The PSVR 2 had some really amazing specs that seemed kind of like a dream for the mass consumer market in terms of getting somewhere to a point where we can start getting stuff like eye tracking and OLED back in the hands of people that might miss or never had those sort of things. So what are my first impressions of playing Horizon Call of the Mountain for 30 minutes? Thumbs up. Pretty high, actually. Before I give my idea of whether you should be pre-ordering or getting excited for PSVR 2, let me go ahead and give my normal disclaimer. This was only a 30 minute demo. It was first impressions and it was in a sort of conference space. It's very loud and very controlled. But the PSVR 2 was pretty good once you put the headset on. It was very light, very comfortable. In fact, it kind of reminded me a lot of the PSVR 1 in a lot of ways. The actual facial pad and facial gap would block out pretty much all outside light very well. Like it was actually kind of amazing how simple the, the, the design was and just wrapped around my face just perfectly to give you that really immersive view. One of the first things they have you do right away is set up your eye tracking calibration and it, it did work. Everything worked. Just like with other Toby standard eye tracking calibrations, you would look at a bunch of dots in different areas that I would ask you to look at for a certain period of time and that would give you the actual IR uh, camera based calibration that will be saved across all your PSVR 2 titles. And once you turn on the calibration, you'd be able to actually navigate menus such as in the actual game with your eyes and pressing the button, which I actually did think that was a very useful feature. I'm not sure if I will use it forever, but for a first impression, I thought the uh, idea from watching videos of it was really gimmicky, but I thought it was actually made me more lazy than just moving my hand and clicking the actual thing on the menu instead. So neat little thing, good gimmick. The second thing they would have you do is they would ask you to turn on the video pass through so they can hand you the controllers and put on all the wrist straps and everything. And the video pass through is black and white, very similar to the Quest 2, except way more high resolution it felt. Um, I'm not sure if it's really depth corrected or anything, but it looked really good from the small impressions. And again, this is not a mixed reality headset. They know they're a VR headset and they're just there to be able to grab a beer off your counter or just put the controllers on. It's kind of weird they didn't have the uh, controllers rendered in the virtual environment, just like with Steam VR, but maybe that is something they'll plan to add in the future. Um, but yeah, otherwise it was a pretty basic and nice uh, black and white camera pass through experience. Now let's talk about the controllers themselves. They're okay. Like I did like the haptics, they were very good and the, the, the actual holding onto the controllers, they, they felt nice in the hand. It may be a little too light after using some other controllers like the Knuckles and the Quest Touch Pro controllers, but I've always liked heavier controllers. But the balance was nice. Uh, all the buttons felt you know nice and clicky just as you expect from a DualShock type controller. Um, but the haptics in it, I want to talk about the haptics because the game they had me in, they kind of went a little too insane with the haptics for sure. Um, they just kind of had it playing with almost the music and the, the surroundings. I wasn't really touching anything, it just kept vibrating. So I wasn't able to get a good feel of the actual vibration for most of the early parts of the demo. I would do things like slam my hand against the boat or put my hand in the water to try to splash and those felt okay. And when it comes to actually shooting your bow, the triggers weren't as strong as I would like them to be with the adaptive uh, force sensing sort of thing. But again, it, it was nice to have rather than not having it. Now there was one big issue I had with my demo and I was really kind of disappointed about it. Um, due to the fact that I am in a conference hall and there's tons of booths, like thousands, I think they said like 3,000 plus in just that one hall alone. Every single booth needs a Wi-Fi network and the controllers were actually losing a lot of tracking because they were not able to sync their IMU data to the console quick enough due to all the interference of the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth and all that other stuff going on. So I had a lot of moments where I would just get flung around if I'm grabbing on a clip and stuff. But I would, when I kind of complained about it, a Sony representative ran up to me and said, yeah, this will not be the initial use case if you do this at home in a regular network. So very unfortunate I couldn't uh, actually stay immersed. That was just the one thing that kept me out of it the entire time. Otherwise, a really great visual experience. The one type of haptic that actually surprised me the most in the entire demo was the head pat haptics, I like to call it. 
Uh, there was one point where a, uh, I forget the character, but the dinosaur would shoot a laser, and if it missed you and hit the wall next to your head, you would feel that in the game on your headset. And that actually gave me a huge wow factor I really was not expecting. Now I have tried a sort of face-based haptic with the B Haptics facial pad. That was terribly uncomfortable. I never used the thing. But it being built into the headband on the PSVR 2 and actually used with software in correct ways, I value that haptic more than the actual controller haptics, whether that be crazy or not. Now the visuals of the actual displays and lenses, uh, it does use OLED at 20, uh, or I should say 2K by almost a little bit more than 2K per eye, uh, Samsung OLED. It's definitely using what looks to be RGB stripes, similar to the PSVR 1, and it's HDR. Whether the HDR was notable in the actual experience, I could not really tell because OLED just is naturally way more colorful than what we've been getting with LCD for the past few years. The LED looks great. There's some sort of weird, maybe I would say black smear in some scenes, but it's definitely way preferable for me over the LCD basic uh, display you would get out of the Quest 2, for example. Now, while the display is definitely doing all the heavy lifting of the gorgeous visuals, the lenses are definitely not pancake lenses, if that makes any sense. I would put them very similar quality in terms of visuals as the Valve Index lenses, but without a lot of that glare that you would expect from something like that. The FOV was pretty good, I would say, in between Quest 2 and Index. I know it's a pretty wide margin, but it was all a very good visual experience, especially when I kind of think about to the fact that, for me, when the PSVR 1 came out, I was already using the Vive. And when I used the PSVR 1 after getting used to the Vive for pretty much a few months by that point, I never wanted to use the PSVR 1 hardware. It was always just such a huge difference in experience. I did not feel that way about PSVR 2. In fact, I feel like it's pretty much the baseline for what a consumer mass market headset should be for gaming at this point in time. The Quest 2 obviously is wireless and everything, but the content is just so bare bones and, 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 and drowned in its own lack of power. And the, the, the cable for the PSVR 2 did not bother me. I was so immersed in the experience because the content was able to render just super strong visuals. Uh, Call of the Mountain was beautiful. I wouldn't put it at the same level of detail and visuals um, as Half-Life Alex, but it's definitely the next closest thing in terms of any AAA content we have out there. I was able to pick up pretty much a ton of objects in the world, including uh, some like paintbrushes. I was able to do some cave paintings on the wall in these certain areas. I was able to find drums and drumsticks and bang on some, make some music. I was able to find maracas. I was able to grab pots and throw them and break them. The, the developers definitely are putting a lot of great interactability in Horizon Call of the Mountain, which is very important because PSVR 2, it comes out next month. And I think the weakest part of it right now is the software library, honestly. They're not transmitting all the uh, games so far from PSVR 1 to PSVR 2. I know a lot of developers are working on porting those experiences to PSVR 2. But when you're talking about a system where you have to buy a $500 console, and even though they are getting more in stock these days, they're still out of stock in a lot of places, and then add the $550 headset on top of that, you're already in the $1,050 range. Now the one thing that they kind of do in the demo that's kind of cheeky and I, you know, it's one of those things you really need to think about and I think it's one of those really negatives about the entire device and it's the lack of built-in audio. I know I complain a lot about the Quest 2 pipe audio speakers or any system like that, but with the PSVR 2, uh, bundled you get earbuds. But in the actual demo that they're showing to press and everyone else, they're not having you test those earbuds. They're giving you the high-end $100 plus um, Pulse Audio wireless headphones that sound great, but again, you forget that that's an added cost on top of the $1,050 sort of range for the PSVR 2 itself and, the, and of course the headset. So that is something you need to be thinking about. I think audio is very important for immersion and I had a good experience during my demo, but that's again, they were providing that to me. The last thing that probably bothered me the most for the entire experience was there's definitely some sort of reprojection going on from at least Call of the Wild that was discernible to me. Now, it's nowhere near as bad as motion smoothing for Steam VR. Um, it's very similar to the PSVR one reprojection where there's just feels like there is just a slight software blur between frames. And 
maybe not everyone will notice it, but for me, it was something that I just kept noticing because I like to move my head around very fast in an environment. I, I turned on smooth turning, which the game does have, by the way. And, you know, I would just, I would turn myself around very fast. And, and yeah, it, it just, I notice it quite a bit. Um, the eye, eye tracking, fovea, and rendering was definitely on. I made sure, made sure to check it was on and everything. So there will be some weird software kinks with that if you're really sensitive to stuff like reprojection or smooth and smoothing. Now, I could probably talk about this uh, headset for much longer than I am in this video, but I have way more stuff to do at CES. Uh, we'll probably do a, a follow-up live stream after the event, so if you have any questions, just keep them until then or write in the comments sections and uh, maybe I'll be able to get to them. But overall, I would actually recommend the PSVR 2 from what I've seen so far for pretty much any mass market consumer that is only caring about VR for gaming. I don't really know about the library for the first year. I think this one game is probably the one game I really am going to play when it comes out and most of the other games that they release on PC, for example, I'm going to still stick with that headset. But if you don't have anything, you don't have a Quest 2, you don't have a PC, I do think PSVR 2 is the correct benchmark for where you should be looking in terms of VR gaming.